So Wes, unfortunately, the Halloween season has come and gone. It's all right. No, it's not. I'm going through withdrawals. Uh, well, now we have Thanksgiving to do. I mean, by the way, happy Thanksgiving, Sean. Happy Thanksgiving, Wes. In the spirit of this holiday, you brought me a wonderful, wonderful gem. Thank <laughs> yeah, you so much. It came to me in a dream. What are we talking about exactly? We are talking about the movie Blood Rage, a.k.a. AKA. <laughs> Nightmare at Shadow Woods, a.k.a. Slasher. Slasher, yeah. Yeah. Blood Rage is a 1987 American slasher film directed by John Grismer, written by Bruce Rubin, starring Luis Lasser, who I found out was married to Woody Allen for a time. Did you I know did that? I did not know that. No. She looks way too old for him. I uh, kind of, yeah. He went from her to Mia Farrow to Mia Farrow's daughter. This wonderful film <laughs> is set on Thanksgiving. The film follows a woman and her adult son who are stalked at their remote apartment community by their son's unhinged twin brother who has escaped from a psychiatric institution after allegedly killing a man in cold blood years earlier. So we're meant to believe. The only other actor in this movie worth pointing out is a small cameo by Don't say it one... yet. Don't say it. Don't say it yet. Wait till wait till they get there. Okay. It's fine. the best part of the movie. All right. We won't spoil it. Filmed in okay. 1983 in Jacksonville, Florida. It was released theatrically under the title Nightmare at Shadow Woods in 1987 in a censored cut which eliminated much of the film's elaborate gore special effects. It was subsequently released on home video under the title Blood Rage, though the opening credits confused Confusingly identify the film's title as Slasher. So there yeah. you go. Not going to get more, much more convoluted than that. No, not really. So Wes, what is your history with this film? Not really anything. I think I found it on a list of like serviceable 80s slasher movies a couple years ago when I first started really watching them. This one just made like some kind of list. They said like, this movie is so bad, it's good, it's fun. So I watched it and I agreed. And then I haven't watched it since until just now. I'm going to guess that you don't have a history with this movie. Zero. I had never heard of this movie till you suggested it oh did you when i when i texted you the other day did you like imdb it or anything or what i went in cold i i knew nothing that's yeah that's probably better off our movie begins identical twins todd and terry they are at a drive-in theater one night in 1974 jacksonville florida nothing screams thanksgiving for a setting yeah, like florida with the palm trees our tease is from the beginning of the episode our surprise yep. cameo mr ted Raimi, brother ted of Raimi. samuel samuel Raimi. yeah most famous for directing the gift starring katie holmes we end up seeing a elderly woman making out with a middle-aged gentleman at, a, at the drive-in theater and the kids wake up and say mom's at it again they sneak out the back of the car without anyone noticing because, you know, when you open up a door of the car, even back in the 80s, a light would come on, but they didn't notice that. He's apparently triggered by his mother's promiscuity. Yeah. Which inspires Terry to take a hatchet and murder a teenager having sex with his girlfriend in the back seat of their car. And he looks up and sees the kid and he goes, hey, hey, get out of here, creep, get out of here. Beat it. That's how you address a child when they're holding a hatchet at your face with your window down as you're naked as fuck with your Harry Bob and man ass for everyone to see at the uh, drive-in theater. And uh, yeah, so that kid was like a little juggalo. He was born with a hatchet and the girl runs out naked. Terry hands Todd the bloody hatchet and does smear him with some blood, even though there's an entire crowd of people watching him do all of this. Yeah. And none of them would uh, testify or talk to an investigator and say, well, it was the other kid. Yeah. No one said that. Todd, too traumatized to speak on his own defense, is found guilty and committed to an asylum. Ten years later in 1984, Todd and Terry's mother visits a now adult Todd in the hospital. We get to meet Dr. Berman, and we see Todd has a real problem with the treat that his mom brought him. Yeah, it was all he like crushed it with his fist, and it was like all over his hands and stuff. They threw it against and, the wall. Yeah. yeah, you know, signifying that he really is crazy. Terry lives happily with his mother in a sprawling but secluded apartment complex called Shadow Woods. On Thanksgiving Day, Terry's long, dormant, murderous rage is revived 
when his mother gets engaged to her fiance Brad, who owns the complex. Yeah, don't, well, he's he's the manager. Don't gloss over the dinner. I mean, this is Thanksgiving dinner, and it looks delicious. There's you know turkey and you know stuff stuffing stuff so now th that's where this all sets up to where the next thing that we do learn is that it's possible that todd has um escaped the uh, asylum that is correct they receive a phone call the family learns that twin brother todd has escaped from his mental hospital and may be heading home and the mom pleads with um, terry and says just don't tell anybody let's just enjoy dinner tonight and we'll worry about this later and Todd's like, yeah, mom, anything for you, mom. Walks out and he goes, hey, everybody. Todd's escaped from the middle asylum. <laughs> 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 Looks like you're gonna get a chance to meet the rest of the family. My psychotic brother just escaped. And from here on out, the mom is never acts right. Not yeah. that she acted right in any way, but yeah, taking her kids on dates and shit when she was just as elderly 10 years prior. Dr. Berman and her assistant Jackie arrive at Shadow Woods in search of Todd, with Jackie pulling a trank gun on him and aiming it right in Todd's face. That was so fucking funny, man. I love yeah. it. And then she came running up from behind. It's just a tranquilizer gun. It's okay. And then uh, the mom comes over and is like, what's going on, Terry? Oh, my God. What's that gun for? Don't worry, Mom. It's no big deal, is what Terry says. Brad talks to Jackie and Dr. Berman, and they split up to look for Todd. While Brad is on the phone with Maddie, Terry murders him by chopping his right hand off with the machete before splitting his head open. His hand on the ground still moving, clutching yeah. at the beer can. What a great effect. Tom Savini, eat your heart out. It was awesome. It was awesome, but it was bad. It was real yep. bad. Jackie takes a break to light one up and is greeted by Terry, who murders him with the same machete. And soon after, he cuts Dr. Berman in half with the machete in the woods. Yeah, that was unsettling. Yeah. Todd discards his bloody clothes and takes a shower with no visible shower curtain and while still wearing his underwear. I'm assuming the actor was not comfortable taking them off, so they compromised. He's a grower, not a shower. That's the first time we hear the reoccurring phrase. It's not cranberry sauce. That's not cranberry sauce. Yeah, it's a really funny joke that he keeps saying. It's basically the catchphrase of the movie whenever there's blood anywhere. Todd then visits his neighbor, Andrea, who is babysitting. Meanwhile, Terry's friend Karen bumps into Todd, who has arrived at Shadow Woods, and she believes he's Terry. When Todd reveals his true identity. You seem nice. I've never kissed a girl before. You really ought to try it sometime. I gotta go. Bye. Yeah, after she figures out that he's the supposed murderer, she says you should try it sometime, which is a good good little line. And then she runs away. And then, yeah, she runs into her two jackass buddies. Yeah, Greg and Artie. Yep. And I think that there's a song that's playing in their convertible this whole time that keeps going, I'm gonna get you. Is I'm there? gonna find you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you. On and on and on, yeah. Back with Andrea, she attempts to seduce Terry, but he seems completely uninterested. Right before her mother, Julie, and her date, Mr. Bean, arrive home. He's like a doctor or an accountant or something like that, but he's rich because uh, the lady's a gold digger by like, easily, right? Uh, yeah, I'm assuming so. I don't know. She said to her baby, I'm going to get you a rich, I'm going to get you a rich <laughs> daddy. <laughs> she also tells Terry, who immediately disappears into the night in search of his twin brother, while Karen and her friends grab Greg and Artie go to Andrea's house to party. Upon learning that son Todd has returned to Shadow Woods, Maddie begins to panic and drinks heavily. She has an emotional conversation with Todd about Terry's homecoming that ends with, put on a sweater. The blue one. Yeah. Just like your underwear. <laughs> yeah, the blue one. Todd comes across Dr. Berman's body and becomes emotional. He even places her legs back where they should be. <laughs> that was Gross. another laughing fit for me. He never learned science. He takes Dr. Berman's gun and goes off in search of his mass murdering twin brother. Back at Andrea's, Mr. Bean gets decapitated by Terry. Uh, Terry had hung it just so, so that when she looked out the people, she saw his mug, Mr. Bean's mug, and she opened up the door and it's just his kappa that was detated, uh, hanging by like an extension cord. I thought, I thought it was funny. Oh, very. Then stabs Julie to death. This movie's like a donut. It's like sugary and good. It's also bad. And it's really, it's over pretty quick. After this, the next few scenes kind of drag. We get a moment between Maddie and Todd and then uh, Greg and Andrea pull a prank on Artie and Karen. It's yeah, kind of boring during this point. Very ill-timed prank. They're actually worried about a murderer being out there. 
Well, some and, people can't read the room, Wes. Uh, yeah, of course. And the makeup looked pretty good on that girl. Much better than the hand. I would say so. So after all that, Terry spies on Greg and Andrea playing tennis before he murders both of them by the swimming pool. <laughs> Can I just tell you as a, as, a, as a tennis player? Yeah. That was really funny. They were both standing in no man's land. If you're standing in no man's land, it means that you shouldn't be there because that's that's where you don't stand. But why would they get that right? Because nothing else in this movie is right. When Artie gets in his car, he's held at gunpoint by Todd, who tries to convince him that it's not him, but actually his brother Terry, who is murdering everyone. Todd flees when Terry sees him, leaving Artie with Terry. As Artie and Terry search for Todd, Artie is suddenly stabbed in the neck with a carving fork. And we get our second, that's not cranberry sauce. It's not cranberry sauce, Artie. Yeah, I mean, it gets funnier every time. <laughs> yeah. It should have been on the box art. Karen meets back up with Terry, who is covered in blood. She suggests that they call the police, and Terry tells her he loves her right before I, it, trying to kill her. Yeah, he starts swinging the uh, machete at her. I said, I love you. And he's not even close to where she's standing, too. That's no. the funniest part. But, uh, yeah, so she starts running away. And this leads to the, our last leg of the movie, which fucking funny. It's pretty funny, yeah. To go back real quick, there was a little girl that was looking for her kitty, and uh, Todd, who is apparently the good guy, um, says, go inside your place and do not open the door for anybody. Apparently she found her cat because when the, the chick was banging on her door saying, I'm a friend of your neighbors, uh, my name is whatever her name is, insert name here, I forget. Oh, the only people's names I know in this are Todd and Terry. She's like, no, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna hurt my kitty. So the chick's running away, she's not she gets into a place and the baby's crying and I can hear your baby. Uh, what, what's going on? Who's all here right now? Blah, blah, blah. And then she hides and uh, hits Terry in the dick with a phone. That hurt, he yep. said. Karen takes the baby with her. Meanwhile, a very drunk Maddie finds Terry's bloody t-shirt in the garbage bin before making the horrifying discovery of Brad's body with his head split wide open. Back at the swimming pool, which has no blood in it, by the way. Take a look. Blood's gone. Yeah. Terry has found Karen with the baby. This is the scariest part of the movie. Uh, she's sitting there on the side of the pool with the baby, consoling the, whatever the fake thing is in her hand that is supposed to be the baby. He starts jumping up and down on the diving board and in like a very menacing kind of way. It was terrifying. She sees him and she runs into like the locker room area and opens up a cupboard, puts the baby in there, who's no longer crying for some reason, and leaves the cupboard open. And then she hides herself in a bathroom stall. Todd arrives and fights his brother inside the pool. And as Todd is pulled out of the pool by Karen, Maddie appears and shoots Terry. Yeah. Oh, that's hot. She starts going kind of crazy emotionally with Todd and starts saying weird things to him, embracing with Todd. You're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. You're the bestest. You're the bestest. It sounded very weird and very sexual. And she goes, it's just you and me. It's just you and me, Terry. He goes, I'm Todd. And he starts going crazy and, and she starts saying it too. I'm Todd. I'm Todd. And commits a suicide. While Todd watches. As Karen flees with the baby, police sirens are heard in the distance. Freeze frame on Todd, fade to black, and that, Wes, is how this wonderful movie ends. Yeah, that's great. One turkey and three references to cranberry sauce. Boom, you got yourself a Thanksgiving movie. That's all you need. All right, Wes, what are your final thoughts and grading on Blood Rage, a.k.a. Nightmare at Shadow Woods, a.k.a. Slasher? Oh, funny, funny you ask, because I have a different grading for all. For Slasher, I'll give it a C plus. For Death at Shadow Village, whatever the fuck you said, I'll give it a B minus. And for Blood Rage, I'll give this movie a goddamn B plus, because you know what? This is the kind of movie that I need in my life. It's great. It's stupid. It's the kind of shit that I like. It's not for everybody. Most people would say this is fucking stupid. I say it's fucking awesome. What do you say, Sean? How say you? Oh, this is a solid A minus in my book. This is fun. It's dumb. It's bad. It's cheesy, garbage, and I love it. The acting, yes. bad. The effects, bad. The story, dumb. But my God, it's a perfect storm. And uh, everybody, you can tell, was giving it their all. And that just makes for a great bad movie. I'll watch this again, no doubt. 
Yes. On the next Bizarre Show. Hey, it's Sean from The Bizarre Show. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, give it a like and make sure you subscribe. We have more videos on the way. Cheers!